In the early hours of Valentine's Day, emergency services were called to an exclusive suburb of Pretoria, South Africa. We can confirm that there was a shooting incident this morning at the home of the well-known um, Paralympic athlete Oscar Pistorius. One of the world's most famous athletes stands accused of the premeditated murder of his glamorous girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp. Why did he pick up that gun? Why did he go to the door? Why did he shoot four times? Pistorius claims he thought it was a burglar hiding in his toilet and that Reva's death was a tragic accident. Only Oscar knows the truth. On Oscar's own version of events, it was senseless and it was mad. It should never have happened. He should not be in the dock. Now it's up to the courts to decide. When it goes to trial, the Blade Runner will face the greatest challenge of his life. It's a court case that's going to be won between who's the better lawyer. If found guilty, Oscar could face 25 years in the notorious Pretoria jail. We've asked two of South Africa's top lawyers to explore the evidence. One for the prosecution, the other for the defense. Using a specially constructed replica of the crime scene, they will investigate the key questions on which the trial will turn. Kill the lights! I cannot see windows, I cannot see any shapes whatsoever. Why would she be needing a cell phone? I don't care a thing. Stay quiet. He had the world in his hand. How do you destroy that so fundamentally? Will Pistorius be sent to jail? Or could the Blade Runner walk free? Oscar Pistorius was the hero of the Paralympic movement and the poster boy for the 2012 Olympic Games in London. He became the first double amputee to compete in the Olympics against able-bodied athletes. I'm overwhelmed with all the feeling and emotion. I'm very, very happy and very humbled that I'll get the opportunity to represent my country. The Blade Runner was the ultimate symbol of triumph over adversity, inspiring people across the world. After returning from the games, Pistorius began dating Reva Steenkamp, a law graduate, model, and emerging television star. They were the country's golden couple. Oscar and Reva were living the dream. But in the early hours of Valentine's Day 2013, that dream turned into a nightmare. Pistorius shot four bullets through a locked toilet door in his bathroom, fatally wounding 29-year-old Reva. In an instant, the Blade Runner became the Blade Gunner. Was it murder or a tragic mistake? The case has divided opinion in South Africa. I think Oscar was just unlucky, unlucky circumstances. He shot her because he thought she was cheating on him. If you close your eyes and you think of his story and you role played in your head, it makes a lot of sense. It's too scripted. Everything just fell into place. So yes, I think he's guilty. I don't think it's murder. I don't think it was planned. But the prosecution argue it was planned, and the charge is premeditated murder. If the state can prove his guilt, Oscar faces 25 years in jail. The defense say that Oscar thought an intruder had broken into his house and that he fired his gun to save himself and Reva. If the judge agrees, it's possible Pistorius could leave court a free man. We've asked two of South Africa's top lawyers to take on the roles of the defense and prosecution. They'll identify the key evidence and show how they would use it to argue in court. Presenting for the prosecution in this program is Estelle Killian, one of South Africa's most respected criminal barristers. She has successfully put hundreds of murderers behind bars. I'm looking forward to presenting the case, and I will go for 
conviction on murder premeditated. Taking on the case for the defence for us is criminal lawyer Marius Dutoy, who has a 95% success rate defending murder suspects. I do not think that the state's going to succeed in the conviction of premeditated murder. I don't think there's enough evidence to support it. Marius and Estelle will put their arguments to the test in this purpose-built reconstruction of Pistorius' bedroom and bathroom, built to the exact dimensions of the crime scene. It actually looks much bigger to me than it actually did on the plan itself. A balcony leads to Oscar's first floor bedroom, connected along a seven-metre corridor, around a corner to a luxury ensuite bathroom with built-in bath and the toilet in which Riva was shot. Our lawyers will explore the four key questions on which they believe the Pistorius trial will hang. One, is it plausible Oscar didn't notice that Riva wasn't in bed? Kill the lights! I cannot see windows, I cannot see any shapes whatsoever. Two, was Oscar on his stumps or wearing his prosthetic legs when he fired his weapon. Three, was vital evidence altered after the shooting? They found a cricket bat, as well as two mobile phones. And they're going to start with the most important question for the prosecution in the trial. Were the couple arguing before the shooting? To prove that Reva's killing was premeditated, the prosecution has to show that Oscar had a motive for murder. And they think they've got one. In the bail hearings, the prosecution revealed two witness statements, saying they'd heard loud arguing from Oscar's house on the Silverwoods estate that night. The prosecution will put the state of the couple's relationship under the microscope. Pistorius and Steenkamp had only been dating for three months and appeared incredibly happy together. Kevin Lorena was friends with both Oscar and Reva. She spoke to a very good friend and she said, if Oscar asked me to marry him, I'll definitely marry him. So they were definitely in love, you know. It, like I said, this was a big shock. But other friends had their doubts about the relationship. Pepe Demivsky was Reva's tattoo artist. I just thought to myself, like, what actually is she doing with him? You know, what? I couldn't put them together. The night before Valentine's Day, Reva seemed happy, tweeting, What do you have up your sleeve for your love tomorrow? Hashtag get excited. Hashtag Valentine's Day. That afternoon, Reva had Oscar's Valentine's present wrapped in a shop owned by Vili Villion, one of the last people to see her alive. She was very happy, she was very outspoken and very smiling and you, it looked like a happy girl. And she actually mentioned that uh, it's her and Oscar's first Valentine together. So what happened that night? During Oscar's bail hearings, the court was read his sworn statement, outlining his version of events. In his affidavit, Pistorius says that after a quiet dinner at home, they had both gone upstairs. She was doing her yoga exercises and I was in bed watching television. My prosthetic legs were off. We were deeply in love and I could not be happier. The prosecution will seek to destroy this picture of romantic bliss and use the witness statements about the argument to suggest Pistorius had a motive for Steenkamp's murder. The question is, are these statements credible? And could they give the prosecution the motive they need to prove murder? To find out, Estelle and Marius are going to put them to the test. Uh, can you please play the sound clip for us? You're going to be in a lot of trouble! I don't hear a thing. He is one of the most recognised and celebrated athletes in the world, and an inspiration to millions. But now, 26-year-old Oscar Pistorius stands charged with the premeditated murder of his girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp. In the hearing to decide whether Pistorius should get bail, the prosecution revealed key evidence on which their case is based. 
Witness statements from the Silverwoods estate say they heard a male and female arguing between 2 and 3 a.m. immediately before the shooting. An argument that could have given Oscar a motive for murder. Our two lawyers have come to a gated community with a layout and location very similar to Silverwood's to see if it would have been possible for an argument to have been heard by witnesses. They're meeting acoustics engineer Tawanda Matora. I would like to show you how the noise mapping software works. Using a program called SoundPlan, Tawanda can produce a noise contour map of the Silverwood's estate. The same software is used to predict the noise impact of new railway lines. This map shows how sound would have traveled from Pistorius's house, given the surroundings and conditions at 3 a.m. on Valentine's Day. Do we know which of these houses is, in fact, Oscar Pistorius' house? So it's this one here, where we put the noise source, where the alleged noise was coming from. So what the computer will be able to show us is how the noise spread. Because this is exactly as things are on the ground. All right, all right. So these contours, the different colors, show the noise levels marked in decibels. The purple and red areas are where the sound levels are highest. The green and yellow areas are where the sound is lowest, below 50 decibels, the level of a normal conversation. The map shows that in theory, if there were no buildings in the way, sound could have reached someone 300 meters away the distance of one witness, according to the prosecution. But at the bail hearings, it was initially alleged that these witnesses were 600 metres from Pistorius' house. This was changed to 300 metres when challenged by the defence, throwing the evidence into doubt. Even if the witnesses had been 300 metres away, could they have heard anything? The easiest way to find out is to test it. So we can do a practical assessment of this and uh, walk around the yard and determine how far we can go while still hearing this noise. Our acoustics engineer has made a recording of a man and woman arguing, which he will play at the volume of a serious row. I'm going to shout! You can shout that I Don't shout, well. shout at me! Good, so we are ready to go? Yes, we're ready to go. Just the fence that marks more or less the 300 metres. So, uh, Estelle and Marius are walking to the perimeter fence, which is 300 metres from Tawanda's apartment, and with an unobstructed line of sound. This matches the distance that the police said one of the witnesses heard Oscar and Reva arguing from. Hello, Marius. Uh, can you please play the sound clip for us? You're going to be in a lot of trouble. Just keep your voice down. I'll not keep my voice down. It's unreasonable for you to think my voice is going to be down. I don't hear a thing. It stayed quiet. It is absolutely impossible. Unable to hear any noise from 300 metres, Estelle and Marius try from 200. And they still can't hear anything. <laughs> Even at 100 metres, the argument isn't audible. They can only hear it 50 metres from Tawanda's apartment. I'm going to shout at you! I'm going to shout at you, OK? It's quite clear that you can hear the arguing now. It's a huge difference from the 300 metres alleged by the police in Pistorius's bail hearing. Estelle, you have to concede that the acoustic test was a fatal blow for the state, the prosecution's case, because that's, of course, what your premeditation and your motive rests on. There are two possibilities open for the prosecution. Either not to overemphasize the evidence that was elicited from that two witnesses, or reinvestigate and try and obtain evidence from anybody that was closer. Based on the results of our test, Oscar's defense team should be able to seriously undermine the value of these witness statements. And if the prosecution can't prove arguing occurred, they'll need to find another motive for murder. There are unsubstantiated reports that Pistorius exchanged flirtatious texts with another woman after he begun his relationship with Reva. The prosecution may try to use these texts to undermine Pistorius's credibility and establish a motive. And they will target Oscar's claim that he didn't know where Reva was when he went into the bathroom and shot through the toilet door.
So the second question for our lawyers to grapple with is... Is it plausible that Oscar didn't notice Reva wasn't in bed? The prosecution will argue that Pistorius knew precisely where his girlfriend was. She had run into the bathroom following a loud argument. The defense will argue otherwise, based on Pistorius's evidence. He says that during the early hours of the 14th of February 2013, I woke up, went onto the balcony to bring the fan in. So the fan was physically placed inside the bedroom, where after he immediately went, he closed the sliding doors, would have pulled the curtains closed, and then he says, I heard a noise in the bathroom and I realized that someone was in the bathroom. I felt a sense of terror rushing over me. I believed that someone had entered my house and I was too scared to switch a light on. He says, I grabbed my 9mm from underneath my bed. It was pitch dark in the bedroom and I thought Reva was in bed. So he at that stage would have gone back to the side of the bed. He would have grabbed the firearm from the side of the bed. At this stage, he had obviously not checked to see if Reva was in the bed. Why is he so close to the bed without making an observation as to what exactly is going on here? touch the bed, he's touching on the side of the bed, why not on top of the bed? I want us to understand, we're now dealing with a person that realises I have an emergency situation in my house. But could it really have been so dark that Pistorius couldn't have seen Reva was missing from their bed? Our lawyers have invited illumination engineer Terry McKenzie Hoy to their purpose-built set to test what Oscar could and could not have seen in a darkened room in the early hours of the morning. Terry has acted as an expert witness in numerous trials. What would have happened on the night in question? Oscar would have got up, he went to the balcony, and he would have still adapted to the night glow outside the balcony. He came into the room, and then he closed the shutters, which would allow some light in. Then he would have closed the blinds, and then he would have closed the curtains, and we've turned around, it would be totally dark. So you would expect him at that stage not to be able to see anything? Correct, yes. And, and how long would this period last? About 20 seconds. In bright light, you can see fine detail. In darkness, you can see a basically slightly jagged, blurred detail. But there's a period of transition, when, in which case you can't see anything. If you look straight at something in darkness, you can't see it at all. So you, you, you sort of perceive it out of the corner of your eye. When Pistorius went outside, his eyes would have adjusted to the ambient light from the streetlights of Silverwoods and some moonlight. The moon was 16% visible that night. We dim the lights to the level Pistorius would have been exposed to on the balcony. I'm going to do exactly what Oscar did. I'm going to go outside, I'm going to take the fan in, then you can test it for us. Can we then take our positions? Okay. Estelle, can you go to bed? Let, when you're ready, Estelle? All right. All right, so Oscar went out. He took the fan, he brought it back into the bedroom. At that stage, he would have closed the sliding doors and he would then have taken the blinds and he would have closed that as well and the curtains would then have been drawn. And he says at that stage it was pitch dark, so I'm turning around in the bedroom. Kill the lights! I'm now standing in the bedroom and I cannot see the bed. I can also not see Reva at all in the bed. At this stage it's quite difficult to, to actually move around the bed. And I'm actually feeling the corner of the bed to make sure that I'm able to go around the corner. I now bend down, and we know that Oscar would have done this. He would have bent down and he would have taken his firearm, which was on the left side of the bed. But at this stage, of course, it's still pitch dark. I cannot make out anything. And at this stage, in the total darkness, he would have moved down the corridor, trying to investigate where this noise was coming from. I cannot see any shapes whatsoever. I don't even know where the bed is, to be honest. Here's the bed. I'm still not able to make out Revive the bed whatsoever. Let's put the lights back on again. Lights on! Thank you, Estelle. If the prosecution hasn't fallen asleep yet, please get out of the bed. To, to come back to the actual test, I was unable to see anything. And only when I returned from the bathroom, Terry, I was able to make out shapes. And I could actually see the shape of the windows and the sliding doors. Is, is that typical what one would expect of a person in that situation? It takes about 10 minutes to fully dark adapt. So to see shapes after about two minutes, it would take a long time before you could really recognize if anybody was around you. 
And do you think, Marius, that that supports the uh, defence version? Cash I think this is really conclusive for the defence. This shows that Oscar wasn't able to see. This might be a win for the defence. But the prosecution could turn it around to question Pistorius' behaviour that night. Have you thought about the implication that because you couldn't see, you had to take alternative measures to ascertain where Riva was? Now you can't see her. One would expect you to start calling out her name. Feel your way around. Make sure that she's not in the vicinity. Because isn't that grossly negligent if you start shooting in circumstances where you can't see? This failure to check for Reva has already been raised in court. In the bail hearings, the defence argued that Pistorius did call out to Reva, but for some reason, she didn't respond. Barry Bateman is a journalist writing a book on the Pistorius trial. Chief Magistrate Desmond Nair, in his bail ruling, found it was highly improbable that somebody who is so fearful of crime he doesn't first seek to find out that his loved one, his girlfriend, is safe. Criminologist Laurie Peters attended every day of Pistorius' bail hearings. His defence is that he was in a panic, he ran, he charged down, and he put four bullets through a closed door. He didn't even bother to find out where Reva was before he fired blindly into the dark. So that would be a red flag to me, because psychologically, the first thing you do is find the people you want to protect. For the defence, Marius has shown that it is entirely possible that Pistorius couldn't see whether Steen Camp was in bed or not. Virtually impossible to see anything. But the defence will have more of a struggle explaining why Oscar didn't check that Reva was safe. Next, our lawyers look at one of the most crucial pieces of evidence that will be produced at the trial, the toilet door through which the shots were fired. The shots were fired above hip height. Both sides agree the door could help prove Oscar's innocence or guilt. Two of South Africa's leading criminal lawyers are examining the key questions on which the Oscar Pistorius murder trial will turn. They've established that if the couple were arguing on the night of the murder, it's very unlikely that prosecution witnesses could have heard it from 300 metres away. I don't care a thing. But the original evidence that was tendered on that distance, it's got no value. Kill the lights! And our team have shown that it's entirely possible that Oscar couldn't have seen whether Reva was still in bed before he started shooting. Virtually impossible to see anything. But the question for him remains, why didn't he check she was OK first? Now they turn their attention to the third question that should be definitively answered during the trial. Did Pistorius put on his prosthetic legs before firing his weapon? The prosecution claimed in court that Oscar was wearing his prosthetic legs when he shot Reva through the toilet door, based on an initial examination of the bullet holes. They say that because Oscar took the time to put on his prosthetics, he had time to consider what he was about to do, which shows planning and helps prove premeditation. However, the defence argues that Oscar fired from his stumps. He was so terrified of an intruder that he acted on instinct and went straight to the bathroom without stopping to put on his prosthetics, as he explains in his affidavit. He says, I heard a noise in the bathroom and I realised that someone was in the bathroom. Although I did not have prosthetic legs on, I have mobility on my stumps. So we know he was on his stumps at the stage and he was still contemplating what his next step is going to be. I believe that someone had entered my house and I was too scared to switch a light on. He then says, I grabbed my 9mm from underneath my bed. So he had me, would have grabbed the firearm. I heard movement inside the toilet. And, and he is on his stumps. We must remind ourselves his... about that as well. And he's absolutely vulnerable. As I did not have my prosthetic legs on and felt extremely vulnerable, I knew I had to protect Reva. He would have shot the, the first shot here. He would have moved closer and he fired another three shots. 
So we know four shots were fired. Police removed the door from the crime scene for forensic investigation, and it will only reappear during the trial. If the door reveals the trajectory of the bullets, it is likely to prove whether or not Oscar was wearing his prosthetics. And this will show if his testimony is credible. But will the door reveal this? To find out, Estelle Killian for the prosecution and Marius Tutoy for the defense are visiting a firing range to meet former police forensic investigator J.C. de Klerk. Marius Tutoy, nice to meet you. Right. Good. Maybe you should just take us through the, through the scene, J.C., so we have an idea what you're actually going to do for us. Thank you. OK, 100%. Take us through the passage. Going into the bathroom, we've got a, a wash basin on this side. JC is going to fire four shots through a door, similar to the one found in Pistorius' apartment. But he's going to do it twice. Once from the height Oscar would have been with his prosthetic legs on, and then once from the height Pistorius would have been on his stumps. He'll then compare the results. This reconstruction is based on the police evidence from Pistorius' bail hearing. Do we know how high the bullet holes were? Hip height above. Just so we get clarity, JC, you're going to do this while standing. You're not going to um, be on your knees. I'm going to stand right so here. You're going to be in line with the state's version. That's good. Well. Now I can show you the firearm. This will be a 9mm parabellum. JC's gun is very similar to the one Pistorius used, a 9mm. But the caliber is 100%. Put the firearm in. Above the toilet. The arm, the head, and another one. Reva was shot in her hip, with the bullet passing through her shorts, suggesting she wasn't using the toilet at the moment of impact. She was also shot in the head and elbow. There are reports one bullet passed through her finger, suggesting she may have been cowering with her arms crossed. The fourth bullet missed and was found later in the toilet bowl. Trajectory, as we now see, is quite possible to give us very scientific and accurate evidence. Absolutely. But are the trajectories noticeably different from bullets fired from a lower position? To find out, JC will now fire from around the height Pistorius would have been if he was on his stumps, as claimed in his bail affidavit. This matches the defence team's version of events. Second one. We do the same. Third one. Okay, I'm bringing in another door. If you look at the trajectories, it's imminent. Yes. The one is more flatter than that. Absolutely. Other. When Oscar's actual toilet door is produced in court, if the bullets have a marked downward trajectory like these, Pistorius' version of events will be thrown into doubt and the prosecution will have scored a major victory. I think the heart of the prosecution will lie in uh, this ballistic evidence. Absolutely. You'll see that the angle yeah. is a huge difference. Whatever the outcome, the door will be central to the trial because it should reveal if Pistorius was telling the truth in his affidavit. We now know that uh, the defence has selected a version that was put on the bail mm. um, record and it's available. That bail record will form part of the Absolutely. hearing. Absolutely, and they can't change it. Um, it will be very, very, very hard difficult. for them to Absolutely. change. Obviously they can, but their credibility will be sh uh, the defence credibility will be shot Absolutely. completely. If the bullet trajectories do show that Pistorius was wearing his prosthetics, then everything in his affidavit will be thrown into doubt. This would be a major victory for the prosecution. And they will also want to emphasize Pistorius's fascination with firearms. 
Despite already owning the Taurus pistol that killed Reva, Oscar had applied for licenses for six more guns. He's known as a carrying his gun so visible and even pulling his gun out and acting as a, a tough guy. I mean, that's, that's, that's very childish to me. And just weeks before the shooting, he was involved in a firearms incident in this restaurant in Johannesburg. Kevin Lorena was there. One friend passed his gun under the table to show Oscar something, and I didn't realize the magazine was still in, and obviously the gun went off. The bullet uh, just missed my toe by, I call it, two centimeters, you know. On the night of Reva's killing, the Blade Runner says he thought he heard an intruder. But he had imagined it happening before. In November 2012, he tweeted... Nothing like getting home to hear the washing machine on and thinking it's an intruder to go into full combat recon mode. But the defense will turn this back on the prosecution and argue that Oscar armed himself with good reason. They will seek to strengthen his position by playing on the widespread fear of gun crime in the country. Crime is endemic in South Africa. The wealthier South Africans have generally resorted to having to hire private security companies to protect them. We literally live and have to turn our houses almost into prisons. People arm themselves just to feel safe. But if you have a gun in a terrible situation, you can protect yourself. You can shoot back. You can shoot first. South Africa is a country riddled with gun crime. With four times more gun-related homicides every year than the US, but with a fifth of the population. Keeping a firearm in the house for protection is seen as normal. It's estimated there are six million privately owned guns, more than one for every 10 people. In a country with so many guns, it's inevitable that accidents will happen. The Pistorius trial may well reference the case of former Springboks rugby star, Rudy Vasahi. In 2004, Rudy was awoken by his wife, Frida, at 5 a.m., believing their daughter's car was being stolen. A sound woke me up, and I saw my lace car, my daughter's car, drove away, and I immediately woke Rudy up. Two of Vasahi's neighbors had recently been murdered by burglars. Rudy, like Pistorius, slept with his pistol in his room. With his gun, Visahi broke the glass of a window, and as he did so, the firearm went off and hit the driver of the car. There's a one out of a million. For people that knows guns, to shoot down uh, to 40 meters down to uh, uh, anything, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. Tragically, the driver wasn't a thief, but Rudy's daughter, Marle, who was off to surprise her boyfriend for his birthday. I just heard Rudy um, shouting, screaming, actually, more than shouting. And I wondered, and he said to me, it's Marle in the car. It's Marle. And I, I was still thinking, what was she doing in the car? She was shot through the neck and died on the way to hospital. If I could take that bullet back, I would have done it, but... It happened. They loved each other. They were very fond. Mine was an accident, and I have to live with it. Oscar's was an accident. You have to live with it. Visahi was charged with culpable homicide or negligent killing, the equivalent of manslaughter in England and Wales. If the prosecution is unable to prove premeditated murder, it's possible that Pistorius could end up being found guilty of the same charge and face up to 15 years in prison. Our legal eagles now turn their attention to what police found at the crime scene. As well as two mobile phones. So the towers beat up uh, the phone and the phone beat up the towers. And ask, was vital evidence altered after the shooting? Lawyers Estelle and Marius have been examining the four key questions 
on which the trial of Oscar Pistorius will turn. And it would have fired towards the door. Having dealt with three of them, they turn their attention to the final question. Was vital evidence altered after the shooting? Pistorius says in his affidavit that he was entirely focused on saving the life of his girlfriend after realising his mistake. He says, when I reached the bed, I realised Reva was not in bed. And it dawned on me that it could have been Reva that was in the toilet. He realises the toilet door is locked. He hits the door, obviously, with a quicker bat a number of times. He opened the door and he would have discovered that Reva at that stage was slumped over but alive. I tried to render the assistance to Reva that I could, but she died in my arms. Estelle, we know what the defence have to prove is that the scene was not tampered with whatsoever. Everything was found exactly as it was left. It doesn't show a person who is deliberate. It shows, in fact, a person who was frantic trying to save Reva's life. The prosecution could allege that Pistorius had ample time to alter the crime scene and think up a cover story before the police arrived. He's claiming that he shot at a burglar at that point in time. It indicates a very well-planned and well-rehearsed and deliberate acting on behalf of a person who realised he's in trouble and he's already got his first excuse. But could Oscar really have concocted a story so quickly? If you commit a murder, you know you're going to spend your life in prison. What is the first thing you start to do? Well, you start to protect yourself. And if protection is by making up the biggest lies imaginable, well, then that's what you're going to do. The emergency services arrived on the crime scene soon after the shooting. What they found will be of the utmost importance during the trial. The first discovery was that uh, the holster of the firearm was found on the left-hand side of the bedroom. That's where the first casing was picked up. Then we have three more spent cartridges in the vicinity of the basin to the right hand. That's correct. They also then picked up on a mat in front of the shower the 9mm parabellum firearm. They found a, a cricket bat as well as two mobile phones. If we consider the version of uh, the accused that Riva went to the bathroom innocently, why would she be needing a cell phone? It could have just been as, as simple as just checking messages. But what we do know is that Riva went to the bathroom or the toilet and that her bladder was empty. So that confirms the submission by the defense team that, in fact, she went to use the toilet. The initial post-mortem report revealed Reva had indeed been to the toilet, but Pistorius didn't mention the presence of both their phones in the bathroom in his affidavit. The state described it as the facts that put a hole through Oscar Pistorius' uh, version of events. And this was the location of the two cell phones. So we want to know, and it will certainly be revealed in court, why they were there. There were rumours that Reva had received a text from an ex-boyfriend, which triggered an argument with Oscar. And now, recent press reports allege that Oscar was exchanging flirtatious text messages with a woman in Cape Town, whilst he was dating Reva. Could Oscar have deleted these messages? And what other evidence could be found in both of their phones? Estelle and Marius have come to meet Werner Jordan, who specialises in examining the forensic data stored within cell phones for the South African police. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Werner. Estelle. Good to meet you. To demonstrate what can be recovered from their mobiles, Werner asks Estelle and Marius to delete a text from their own phones at random. Uh, so what we do is we just connect the our phone. Um, <clears throat> What I can see here is that there was a message from Peter deleted as part of the, the conversation which says, I will then do petrol on my way, see you 8.15, is that correct? That's absolutely accurate. If Pistorius deleted texts, the police will soon find them. But that's not all. 
Werner's also able to track the movements of mobile phones, down to a radius of just three metres. If Oscar and Riva were carrying their phones during an argument, this data could be crucial in the trial. From the information in their phones, Werner pinpoints Estelle and Marius's movements from 24 hours ago. All right, so yesterday morning, um, at about 7, quarter to 8, you were there in Alexandra area. So there's a lot of places where the towers picked up uh, the phone and the phone picked up the towers. Um, so if you... And those markers are really close to one another. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the, the, the stronger the signal, obviously the better location logging will be of the phone. Now this is really amazing because, of course, it shows exactly what time I was at what location. So theoretically, you would be able to indicate whether the person was upstairs or downstairs in an apartment, for example? Uh, not, not as much upstairs or downstairs because uh, your, your, your latitude and longitude will stay the same. But if, if it's two separate locations on the same floor, let's say, for instance, a bathroom and then the TV room, which is about 10 meters away, and there were six towers, then you will have a stronger signal in the TV room than in the, in the bedroom or in the, in the toilet. Both Oscar and Reva's phones could reveal hidden information that may strengthen the case of either the prosecution or defence and play a pivotal role in the trial. And the trial will take place here, in the Pretoria High Court, scene of some of the most significant court cases in South African history. When it begins, one man will decide Pistorius' fate, the judge. Juries were abolished in South Africa under the apartheid regime. Pivotal to the trial will be the four key questions debated by our lawyers. Estelle and Marius have convened for their closing arguments. We know that the acoustics was in favour of the defence. You're going to be in a lot of trouble. Just keep your voice down. I don't care a thing. It's dead quiet. We know that the darkness test was in favour of the defence. I cannot see windows, I cannot see any shapes whatsoever. To, I don't even know where the bed is, to be honest. Now you can't see her, one would have expect you to make sure that she's not in the vicinity. Other than the ballistics, there's very little that was really in favour of the prosecution team. I appreciate that that's the way you're thinking and uh, I wish you the best of luck because I think you've got an uphill battle. You're losing sight of all the evidence that was found by the police immediately after the shooting in that bedroom and the bathroom. We have the toxology reports that we're still waiting for. The post-mortem, I'm confident that's going to uh, strengthen and support the, the ballistic um, examination. If he's found guilty of premeditated murder, Oscar could be facing 25 years in the notorious Pretoria jail. But if the prosecution can't prove premeditated murder, the charge could be downgraded by the judge to culpable homicide or negligent killing, the equivalent of manslaughter. In my mind, it will have almost no effort to be turned into a conviction on the minor charge of culpable homicide. So that, that's the worst case scenario for the state. Well, do we agree then that ultimately we're looking at a culpable homicide conviction for Oscar Pistorius? At the minimum. At the maximum. If the judge agrees that it was culpable homicide, one man who will be watching carefully will be Rudy Vasahi, who accidentally shot his daughter and whose case has been cited as a precedent for the Pistorius trial. I've been led off. Yeah, because the judge said that uh, I'm suffering and I'm going to, uh, to live with this my whole life. Visahi was charged with culpable homicide, but never stood trial. The judge exonerated him of all charges and Rudy walked away from a tragedy, a free man. Even though he admits he killed Reva, could the Blade Runner do the same?